Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today with a new recap of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Season 4, Episode 4. And let me start off by saying I enjoyed this episode a lot once more. Um, the season is going great. They are really getting top tier. They are ascending into housewife history greatness. Um, kudos to everybody. Everybody is checked in. Everybody is activated. Everybody is engaged. Let us quickly recap the episode and discuss and talk about what actually went down. So everybody's kind of talking about what went down at that heinous dinner the other night where Meredith and Angie went at it. And... um Lisa is kind of, you know, saying that she is recognizing the same behaviors that Meredith uses or used in the past with Angie that she may have used with Lisa. And I do see, you know, the same kind of pattern as well. But then again, I myself hold a grudge or two, so not too much on Meredith and my, on my personal opinion or my stance. Um, but two things can be definitely true at the same time. And Meredith and Monica are also discussing what went down last night. And Monica is definitely switching to Meredith's side. She saw the potential and she saw a way to get into the group, definitely. And I think that was her trying to get on Meredith's good side. And I think by the way everything seemed... Monica is getting on Meredith's good side, so I guess that's working for her. Um, everybody's meeting up outside at the motel with their cute little t-shirts that they have. And they are, you know, gathering for the group activities. And Meredith is saying that they will do, you know, a trust bonding thing at a park nearby. And Angie also arrives in her DIY t-shirt, which was, you know, the total contradiction to Meredith's t-shirts. Her t-shirt said, no tricks, no, no trust, all tricks, no trust. Damn. Um, now we go to this exercise. Everybody's getting paired up. Heather was with Angie. They do seem to be getting along. Lisa is with, um, I forgot. Heather is with Angie, yes. Meredith is with Whitney. And Lisa is with Monica. So they all team up. They do these group exercises. Um, Mary is very much off this episode, I think. She is very good comedic relief, but she wasn't really interested in partaking in any of the activities. She's kind of saying her part of, you know, I know who to trust in this group. I don't need this stupid activity to tell me on how and what to build in further on in the script because I know where I can attach myself to, which I'm saying, you know, good for her. I think she's still a little bit, you know, not traumatized, but taken aback at what what, ha what happened in the past. So maybe we have to see that from that perspective. But they go on and do the group exercises. They come back and they have this dinner or luncheon. The spread looked gorgeous. Everybody's taking a plate, but it's so quiet. It's so off that... There is kind of a clear divide in the group. Excuse me for yawning. I am super tired. I am already... I've already missed a day for this recap. So I am out here at night filming this for you guys. So give me my credits, okay? And... You know, Whitney is kind of mentioning this and noticing and the, the group splits up and Whitney hijacks the rest of the trip and is saying that she is going to take over and that they're going to do a drag competition. And as soon as she said that, she also said that they all need to cancel their glam. 
so they could really get into it with the drag makeup. And as soon as she says that, Lisa Borlow metaphorically starts foaming at the mouth because she is definitely proper and preppy and very much in control of her looks. I mean, Lisa always looks stunning. Face beat, snatched, outfit is always flawless. And I sympathize for her because I kind of am the same way. You know, it could also be that Lisa is kind of self-conscious about some things in her appearance, which I definitely think she doesn't need to be because she is gorgeous. But I definitely sympathize with the fact that she wanted to be in control. And yeah, they have this little drag off and Monica is actually the winner. She went all out. I actually thought that Heather was the best dress. She had this, you know, Dolly Parton vibe. And yeah, they are sitting down after the drag competition. Lisa wants to try to approach um, Mary, but Mary is, you know, every time they do so, I think they fall flat because she is being very apprehensive with the group um, more than she was in the last two episodes, which I think is a little bit strange. I think this is just too much for her. She enjoys being alone. She enjoys being definitely on time out to recharge as much as she can when she's out here socializing. So I guess she truly is more of an independent spirit. So then the girls go ahead and get ready for the night. They switch into more comfortable shoes and go out to the club. And they, um, take some shots they prior to arriving have a little you know situation going on where monica went off the rails and kind of responded to lisa saying what were what well what were you guys talking about earlier at the dinner about you know this divide in the group and monica for some reason goes off and she is very much dragging or at least trying to drag Lisa through the mud because she did not dress up in drag. She is still talking about that ring. And if you hear some sped up voices in the background, I am, you know, rewatching the episode right now on double speed because I, my memory is the memory of a 75 year old man, sadly. So I need that in the background so I can recall what happened. Um, they get in this huge, huge tiff about the ring and about how Monica can't stand to listen to it. And they, it escalates really quickly. Monica even, you know, insults her in Portuguese. And Lisa is trying to say, well, you know, I care for your situation, I have, I'm so sorry for what you're going through because Monica is saying that it's painful for her to listen as someone who is going through divorce uh, to someone who is definitely in a much better place than her. But I watched the Brooke Ashley's review on this episode and shout out to her. I She probably doesn't watch, but everything that she says I need and want to agree with because that's exactly the opinion I share. Monica, you exactly did know when you signed up for the show the lifestyles that you would have, you know, surrounded yourself with. I don't know if it's episode four and you needed to do the most to kind of, you know, get signed onto the show. But, um... It, it is definitely not a good look to lash out at Lisa like that. I thought it was uncalled for. And if I would have sold, not sold, if I would have lost a $60,000 anything, I would have been talking about it for months and months and years to come, okay? I mean, I get the way that it can seem tone deaf, but I think other people are not responsible for your triggers at all. You kind of need to keep yourself in check and see and recognize 
how and when something bothers you and kind of you know make peace with it when you have a situation when you're in a van that you can't escape from um kind of make peace with it right then and there but then they arrive at the bar um lisa approaches monica which i thought i i was surprised because i wouldn't have thought that she would do that she tried to kind of resolve the situation but it goes very very left quickly um monica saying well you do not live like the middle class of america you cannot relate it looks like yeah i do and monica's like well they don't have 60 g rings and lisa's like yes they do which lisa girl they definitely do not they may have a cute you know one to five k ring at most inherited from you know whatever part of the family or maybe bought themselves as an accomplishment but i think 60k that is on average what the american family makes a year and to put that in perspective i am from germany and people that make 60k here are considered like super super duper rich um abnormally rich that they would probably get taxed a lot so um yeah lisa i think definitely took an L by saying that, but I think they both just need to communicate in a more lucid state. And while they are getting into a tiff, Meredith and uh, Whitney are getting into it. Whitney is calling her out again for her excuses. And as soon as she calls out, you know, her three-year-old, I think, friend's son that has, uh, you know... Uh, a dis- uh, that is disabled Meredith pops off she's telling me that she's disgusting and I definitely felt for Meredith in that second because you can definitely see in that Oscar worthy performance that it did touch her when she mentioned that when she mentioned the child it went near to her heart and you know Meredith is then explaining that Everybody is, you know, ganging up on her. And yesterday, a pit bull attacked her, which the pit bull in question is Angie K. And she's like, well, did you just call me a pit bull? And Angie K is trying to talk to Meredith. And Meredith is paying her zero time of the day. She is paying her dust. She is turning away from her. Well, Angie K is avidly speaking to her. She's trying to reach her. But, um... You know, Meredith is like, you are heir to me. I do not see you. I am not engaging. I am very much disengaged, which power to her. That is definitely some self-control. And then somehow Monica and Angie are getting into it because Angie is all up in Monica's face. And then Monica is apprehensive about that. She's pushing Angie K kind of, you know, with her hand a little bit back. And kind of threatening her that he, she does definitely not want to, you know, kind of get on her bad side. For real, for real. Um, they are also then all of a sudden talking about Jen Shaw. Which Monica is saying, well, you all did favors for her unpaid. And I was, you know, paid at least. Or, and no, she said that she was not paid. And then Angie's like calling her out on the BS because... As much as I maybe think that Angie is a little thirsty, um, I definitely don't think that Monica did not get paid for that amount of time when she was, you know, Jen's assistant. Maybe she did, maybe she did not. I do not know, allegedly. Um, But as a mother of four kids, I doubt that she would be in such an uncertain place of work. But then again, we definitely do not know the circumstances that were back then for her so i refrain from that conversation and meanwhile all this mess is happening mary is having the time of her life with production she is telling them that she wants to go to mcdonald's and order her a fish fillet with a six piece uh, a six nu- a six mi- chicken mcnugget piece um with a fry I, I, the way that Mary Cosby can get away with anything at, 
in this franchise is astonishing to me because she does know the value that she brings and she knows that she is definitely not in a position where she needs the money. They definitely need her. So I guess power to Mary Cosby. I just wish that she will engage a little bit more in the, you know, future episodes. But again, she is a friend of, it's not expected of her to, you know, kind of do the most. And with the things that she has done already for the last four episodes, she has provided us with cinematic experience, okay? Um... The ladies head back to the motel, and this is where the episode ends. We see a preview of the next episode where Heather is talking to her daughter about, you know, that she's scared for her environment at school because I think she said that her daughter is kind of bullying her. Not, I mean, not her daughter is bullying her, but her daughter is getting bullied at school. And we see Monica getting into more tiffs, and Whitney... And Meredith getting at going at it, and I am definitely curious to see what's going to happen next. And all in all, I thought this was a good episode. It was not as good as the other three that we've seen, but it was definitely entertaining. And it's also nice to see how this franchise can fu- can function without a major scandal like the ones that Jen Shaw brought the last two seasons. So there is hope for, you know, the continuing of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I was a mess this whole recap. I apologize. I was all over the place. I had such a long day at work. I am so effing tired, but I wanted to get this recap up. So, for the ones that, you know, may or may not watch, they know kind of what is happening over there at Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And even if I can convince one of you to give it a try and look at, you know, the next episode, I am very much happy. Because I do not want these girls to get cancelled. And if they do, I hope... They kind of just switched them onto Peacock because I see how they would fit very well onto Peacock. So, yeah. Anyways, let me know what you let me let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe to the video, and if you want, hit the notification bell down below so you do not miss out from any future content of me and i am definitely now going to bed because i need some rest (laughs) goodbye